Here's a picture of a motherboard that not only has PCI slots on it, there's the ones we were looking at before, those 32-bit PCI slots. These have other slots on them called PCI Express slots. You can see they look a little bit differently and are have different places where you'd have those keys right on the PCI Express view. This is a PCI Express X16. It has 16 lanes available to it to send information. Interestingly enough, the little tiny one right next to it is also a PCI Express slot. It is a PCI Express X1. It has one lane. We are able to build different sizes of PCI Express slots on our motherboards, and that allows us to first fit around some of the spaces we have on our motherboards, but it also means that we can have slots that might do very simplistic type functionality sitting right next to slots that can really send a lot of different traffic back and forth over that. You can see everything from a one lane, two lanes, four lanes, eight lanes, 16, and 32 lane PCI Express slots these days. And that's where you would see video cards might go in a PCI Express 16 because it can send so much traffic over those 16 lanes to and from our motherboard. But if we're doing something like a serial port or a USB port, we may be able just to use a PCI X1 and not need all of the power and all of the requirements and all of the space on our motherboard that we would need with a PCI X16. We see this a lot with high-end video cards. So here is a video card that has one of those PCI Express options on there. You can see the little hook that's used to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And you can see the PCI Express view here. And you want to be sure that if you are buying one of these high-end cards, this might be a PCI Express uh, X16, 16 lanes there. You want to be sure, obviously, that your motherboard has a slot available that will at least do X16, or else you're going to be in trouble. You won't be able to plug this in anywhere on your motherboard. Multimedia adapters will also use PCI Express. This multimedia adapter is one that has a PCI Express X1. Only needs one lane. And that's because it's an audio card. And generally, audio card needs a lot less throughput than perhaps a video multimedia video card might need. Because of that, we don't have to use one of those big slots in PCI Express. I can just use one of the really tiny PCI one lane PCI Express connections. Saves some room on our motherboard. Does Certainly doesn't require as much power. And we're really optimizing the space that we're using. Another emerging trend we tend to see is putting television tuners inside of our computer and using our computers to record the television programs for us to view later. To be able to do that, we'll need a television tuner that will be able to get this information right off the coax, right off our cable television, and store it. And you can see this is, a, again, a PCI Express card. Looks like it's a PCI Express 16 port. And it's got an HDMI port on it. And it's got a DVI port on it. So we can plug in a monitor to be able to see not just the video from what we're doing, but we can also have input that can then be output through those video connections. So it's a multi-use card that's not just our video adapter. It's also one that's going to gather and collect video, the television tuner information for us as well. Audio and video is one type of input and output from our computer. But there's some other input-output adapters we need to be aware of. For instance, this is a PCI adapter. We can see down here it actually has PCI written on the device itself. But you should be able to look at the adapter interface now and be able to understand, is that PCI, is it PCI Express, or is it AGP? This happens to be a SCSI adapter. So for our SCSI disks, we need something that is able to communicate and plug in our SCSI connections. We've got a SCSI connector internally that's used to plug in our SCSI drives. There's also this one happens to have an external adapter on it as well, if you happen to have an external SCSI drive. And they communicate back and forth to our computer over this PCI interface at the bottom. We've got other I.O. that might be used. Maybe you've bought a new computer and you don't have a serial port, or you'd like to add another parallel port for some reason. You can buy a card like this that has both a serial port and a parallel port on it. And this one happens to use PCI Express, a one-lane PCI Express, to be able to do that. Maybe you need more USB ports, a similar thing as well. Here's a PCI card that is plugging in and is able to allow you with one, two, three, four more USB ports able to come right off the motherboard itself. And now you've got plenty of more USB that you could use inside of your computer. There are also a number of communication adapters you may want to add inside of your computer. A very common one in the past has been modems, being able to take this 
PCI connection here, plug it in, and be able to interface with the telephone line so that you can communicate over that phone line to another modem on the other end and be able to transfer digital data across that. These days, almost everything is using Ethernet or wireless. And you can, of course, plug in a wireless adapter or, in the case of this picture, an Ethernet adapter and be able to plug directly into an Ethernet network just by adding an interface card to your computer. Let's go through some Q&A and see if we can recall some of the things we've learned in this adapter cards module. What interface type is used by the latest high-end video graphics adapters? There were a couple of interface types that we saw on our motherboards, but really only one had the throughput to be able to support the high-end capabilities of today's video graphics adapters. And that interface type was a PCI Express interface. Another question, what kind of interface can capture video and audio from over-the-air television signals? We saw one of those adapters. It had a coax connection right on it, and that's a television tuner adapter. And our last question, what kind of adapter card can interface to telephone lines? Don't see them much anymore, but occasionally you'll come across a requirement to have a modem adapter on a computer that we can plug into the telephone line and communicate to a modem that's somewhere else on the other side. That covers our requirements for the CompTIA A plus 22701 Essentials Exam, Section 1.9, where we've gone through adapter card interface types, and we've looked at video, multimedia, I.O., and communication adapters. If you'd like to see many of our other A plus videos, go through our message board, send me an email, and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com. <laughs>